one loon for each virtual machine. So if we go and enumerate these guys, VM A, B, C, D, they go and create you no know, loon A, and they use that, and it's a dedicated disk which they store the, the configuration uh, and the VHD on uh, for that virtual machine. And they do that for each of these. So that's a very simple approach to, to take, and it's quite effective. Um, it does have a significant uh, issue, though, in that what will rapidly happen is you're going to run out of drive letters uh, in your cluster. Um, you know, each of these lines need to have a drive letter. You get all the way up to uh, Z, 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 um, and you're out of drive letters. So what do you do? Well, there, this is where things get interesting because there are a number of different ways to deal with this. The first one is um, that we have a concept of grouping. Well, what I could do is I could say, okay, I'm going to create a single line that's used for A and B. So this does have a downside. What it means is that you know I can no longer move just A and leave B. It means that if I do a, a plan failover, both of these virtual machines move together. However, there are a lot of situations where this works you know, quite effectively. You know, let's say I have my two node cluster and I'm, I'm using this in production and my reasons for using this is I want to be able to do maintenance on this box and keep virtual machines running and I want to be able to support you know, unplanned outage. Well, in that case, I really only have two modes of operation. I have VMs spread across the nodes or all the VMs on one node. So coming up with a statement that says when I move A, I move B actually isn't that onerous because in any of your scenarios when you move to A, you're going to move B anyway. So that's the, the first way to work around it. The, the next one, and this is actually really interesting and really quite powerful, is what you do is rather than you know, creating this LUN per virtual machine and using the LUN to store the, the virtual hard drive and the virtual machine configuration, you create a LUN per virtual machine, you know, A, B, and you actually configure these LUNs to be pass-through disks. Um, into the virtual machines where they're directly connected. And now those pass-through disks don't need to have drive letters, so you don't have any drive letter issue. They're being directly used by the virtual machine. Now you do have a problem in this model in that while your pass-through disks are going through the, the virtual machines, you need to have your configuration stored somewhere. And what most of our customers do when they're using this configuration is they actually set up uh, highly available uh, SMB share as part of the cluster. So what they'll do is they'll pass through the disk and they'll create you know, an extra line which is used for their SMB share and they'll expose it up here as a highly available SMB share. They store the virtual machine configurations on that and pass through the disks. And there are about three other possible configurations but I'm not going to talk about them now because <laughs> they get uh, even more esoteric, but uh, the, the, you know, the end story is the really interesting thing here is that you know, anything that you can do with a cluster, uh, we can support doing uh, with virtual machines on top of that cluster. So if you, in an ideal world, <laughs> what, what, would you, what would you say is the, is the, the, the staple Which kind of one to, to use? I was, yeah. just, I was just about to say, so you know, as, as is you know, the common answer, there is no like, this is the one, you know, because obviously if there was a this is the one configuration, then I wouldn't be talking about all these different configurations. I'd just be saying, go use this one. Uh, it really depends on your environment and on your, on your needs. You know, like, if you, if you have a SAM and you're doing, you know, a two-node cluster, then just create ones. Give them drive letters. You're not going to run out of drive letters. It's going to be fine. You know, run your VMs, that works. You know, if you have a really big SAN and you want to create a 16 node cluster, well, then you're going to need to look at doing pass through volumes and doing you know, the highly available file share. Now, if you're trying to do a high availability on the cheap, you know, and you know, you're, you're more so interested in the, the load balancing aspect, you know, yeah, look at SMB. 
you know, set that up. Now, that's the one I do in my office. Three physical computers and, and I have a cluster. So, you know, it really depends on what your needs are and what sort of, you know, hardware environment you're looking at. You know, from, from your, your mind flow and what you're thinking, what you should really be thinking is like, okay, like, why am I doing high availability? What, what are the features that I care about? What's the functionality I want? What's the level of availability I want? Then using that list combined with the reality of your budget to figure out what's the hardware that I'm going to get to support this. And once you've got that hardware and you've got that list, it's really fairly easy to go, okay, here's the configuration that makes the most sense. Uh, we have one quick question. There's a way for us to actually create a LUN uh, assignment without actually giving a drive letter and just use GUIDs, right? Yes. That's one of the complicated ones I wasn't going to go into. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we do, we do actually, uh, one other option is uh, that we do actually support, if I create a LUN per virtual machine, um, I can have these LUNs partitioned and configured, uh, you know, partitioned with NTFS. And we actually do allow you to create configurations and store VHDs on them without ever assigning drive letters to the LUNs. Um, it's kind of weird. It's not something that most Windows people are used to. Um, but basically, you're able to use the, the GUID that uniquely identifies the disk, uh, the physical disk, and use that in your path. Um, to be able to do this. Um, that's a very powerful option, but it's rather complicated to set up. Okay. Um, one of the things I want to know is, is quick migration. There's this term of quick migration. What, what is quick migration so, in this? So, so quick migration is the, the planned failover that I talked about. And that's the being able to, you know, if you, and that's the, that's the term that's used in the cluster management UI. Uh, if you go into the UI, you'll say, I want to fail over. Uh, this virtual machine. It doesn't sound as exciting as, as quick migration. And that's where, you know, you'll go into the cluster management UI and you basically say, I want to move this virtual machine. And that's where we put the virtual machine into a safe state, move the storage across, restore it. And usually that's, you know, under a minute. That the, the, the downtime window is dependent on the amount of memory you have assigned to the virtual machine. VMware claims zero downtime. Yes, is, they do. Is is that is that true or what is that? You well, know? <laughs> I mean, they have they have the feature of B motion, which it's not zero, but it is zero for all intensive purposes. Um, the 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 true statement is you can't notice the downtime, um, and that is functionality they have, and that's something that we don't have today. We think that's important functionality that we would like to have. However, at the same time, when we talk to our customers. A lot of them find that in their environments, being able to move virtual machines you know, with you know, sub a minute downtime meets their requirements, and we're able to do it on a much, much wider range of hardware uh, with a much lower cost point. All right. okay, so I have one last question for you. What's the thing that you have on you? What is what, 2H2O? What, what, what's the t-shirt? What's 2H2O? Well, show so, it's on the back, and that might give it an So this is, this is actually an uh, internal team shirt. I chose it uh, specifically for today. So a uh, few of you may be aware that uh, prior to having the official name Hyper-B, uh, we worked on the code name Viridian. Um, and what this actually is, is 2HTO is the, uh, is the chemical compound that makes up the active ingredient in the dye that creates the color Viridian, which is a dark green. Good to this, know. This is the <laughs> compound for Viridian. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, well, why isn't the shirt in Viridian, though, right? Exa well, unfortunately, this green is not Viridian. Uh, um, it, it would be a darker green, but they had it's, contrast It's issues. close enough, right? Yeah. Close enough for all intents and purposes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, all right. Well, thank you guys for your time. And uh, maybe till next time. You never know, right? All right. <laughs>